can be on this team and play for that team also. Doesn't that sound ridiculous when you look at it that way? How can I be on this team and then turn around and be like, same uniform, I'm on y'all team now. And I'm going to come over here and score. And we score effortlessly because there's no defense. Because I'm scoring for the wrong team. How can we play on this team and that team at the same time? The Bible says you can't, you can't struggle on the fence. You can't serve two masters. That don't make no sense. If I was a coach, I would put, get the guy out of here. You didn't score 15 points for the home room team. And then you want to score 15 points for that team and then go back to the other team like nothing happened. I'm back. Can, can y'all just forgive me? Lord, can you just forgive me? I, I know I scored 15 points for them and put them in the, in the head, but can you just forgive me? And what does God do? Come on, come on, get back on the team. Come on, come on, get back on the team. We start all over again. Woo, Jesus, yes. <laughs> and then something happens again. And we find ourselves back scoring for the other team. You're never going to have victory if you're not playing for the right team. And you don't stay on the right team. You have to stay on that team, y'all. You can't be playing for both teams. That just, that, that, when God, I said, man, Lord, that don't make any sense. But we do it all the time. We try our best to play for both teams. Well, if I score 10 over here and just eight over here, you know. And we wondering why, you know, why, why, why can I have victory in these areas? Why am I struggling in my personal life? Why is my personal life so discombobulated at times? Why, why, why I seem like I just can't get it? Because you're trying to play on both teams. You just try to mask it up and don't make it look like that. But everybody else sees it. God sees it. You can't play for both teams. So victory comes when you realize that there's a real battle going on. Their battle wants to see who's going to win. Your soul. And if you steady scoring for the wrong team, guess where your soul is going? I don't care what uniform you got on. If you're scoring for the opposite team and they win, Lord Jesus, Somebody's going to win. I just want to be on, 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 on God's side. And, but we say that, but do we really mean it? I just want to be real with you this morning. I'm, I'm not trying to sugarcoat nothing. When we say we want to be on God's side, do we really mean we want to be on God's side? Or do we want to be on God's side when it's convenient? When it's convenient for us to be on God's side, well, I want to be on your side on Sunday for sure because I got to go to church. I got to be on your side on Wednesday because it's Bible study. You know, I'm probably on your side on a Friday. It was a man's night, so I got to make sure. But on, on Monday and Tuesday, can I play for the other team? A whole city had a fit when one player went to another city. They broke his jerseys. They, 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 they X'd them out. They, just for going, listen, I don't want to play for y'all no more. I want to play for that team. A whole city, a whole state, all of Ohio just cursed LeBron. All because he went to another team. And then he came back and then broke with him. Hey, welcome back. Forget about the jersey we just scratched up. No, we didn't really mean that. But if a whole state can be upset, how do you think that makes God feel when we try when we try to leave His team and go be on another team? Come on, come on. And then, like I said, we come back like ain't nothing happened. Oh, Lord, forgive me. You will have to repent a lot less if you just do right. Yes, 
your, your whole prayer shouldn't be about repenting. If your whole prayer is, Lord, forgive me for this and forgive me for that and forgive me for that and this, then something ain't right with your walk. The Bible the Bible gives you an outline of how prayer should go. Our Father, our God, heaven, our name, our kingdom come, what we done, or forgive you know, I'm a Lord, forgive me, I did mess up, Lord, bam, forget. But you, if you got like a list of stuff that you need to be forgiven for, then you need to check your walk. And, and really see what team you playing for. Because obviously you're not playing for the right team. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Number two, I got I got I got about about five things I want to talk about. Victory comes when, I mean, you, you have a ton of things to talk about. I can't talk about everything. We only got a certain amount of time. Uh, but I, I got about five, five or six things that I want to talk about. Uh, uh, the next one is victory comes when you are willing to change. Victory comes when you are willing to change. Go with me to Matthew chapter 19. I know Mama Lee noticed I'm in the New Testament. <laughs> That's a little inside thing. Uh, keep your place in Galatians because we're going to go back there also. I'm sorry, you probably already turned from it. But at least you know where it's at. <laughs> where we at? Matthew chapter 19? I'm only going to be about another two hours and then we can get out of here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> they going to be like, no, Lord. <laughs> that was not Jesus. <laughs> uh, amen. Y'all see me. Where we at? Chapter 19, starting at verse 16. It says, and behold, one came and said to him, good master, what good thing I do that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, why callest me thy good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep your, uh, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, uh, what Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt live. That thou, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 20. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth on up. <laughs> what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, thou wilt be perfect. Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. And the, but when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. You have to be willing to change. He said, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. That you said, everything you said, I got that. Bam, check that off the list. Boop, boop, bam. But he wasn't willing to change. See, he was he was rich, so to give all his money to the poor, that would have he would have had to change his lifestyle. A lot of us don't want to change our lifestyle. That's why we can't get victory. He had to change. He said, "I had to give up everything, give everything, and give to the poor." Well, do you know how that's going to change? Everything. That's going to change how I act. That's going to change how I think. That's going to change how I interact with people. People don't want to change. Now, the one example that I got, ladies don't be upset with me, but this is a, this, this is a good example, so I got to use it. Got to use it, bro. I know you got me back, so if I got to run out real fast, just, you know, just, just you know, protect me. And it's, it, it's a plus to lady in man, but it really, really, really for my boys, really for my ladies. You pray, you ask the Lord to send me somebody that's going to love me, that's going to cherish me, that's going to treat me right, that's not going to Ike turn me, you know, that's just going to love me. Now that's serious, you know, you better pray to nobody Ike turn you. You better, you better put that in your prayer. That's, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. We pray for all these things. You pray for all this, and this is what I want. And then when you get it, you say that's not the guy. You say he's too nice. 
Oh, he's too sweet. But I thought that's what you wanted. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. You said you wanted someone to love you, worship the ground you walk on, treat you good. But he's too sweet. He's too nice. I'm going to probably run over him. You subtract the two, carry the one. You asked for someone that was going to love you unconditionally. You don't want to be with that person because the problem is you don't want to run over that person. Wouldn't it be a lot easier just to change you so you can receive the blessing? People don't want to change. So they let the good guy go and they get a knucklehead. Then they change for the knucklehead. I turn them. Then I was, you change, you get enough turner coming in you. So victory comes when you're willing to change. People that want to change. You ask for it, you want it, you pray, you fast, and you're doing everything. And then when it happens, God says, We have to change this about you in order to receive the victory that you asked for. And you say, No, I can't do that. I don't want to change how I manage my money. I just want to spend it on whatever I want to spend it on, but I want you to continue to bless me more. Victory comes when you're willing to change. It's really that simple. But change only comes when you look at the man or the woman in the mirror. You, 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 you have to, you have to, you know, you have to, you know, what's it called? Self-examination, thank you. Self-evaluation, self-examination, self is something. Selfie, take a selfie and look at it and say, man, how much junk I got in me right now? Come on. I'm full of anger, I'm full of full of full of jealousy, I'm full of I'm full of all types of stuff. Maybe that's why I can't get victory. See, we 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 try to attach the struggle over here and the victory for the struggle. We don't we don't realize that all this other stuff is attached to that. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't realize that your, your, your attitude, how you treat people, all this is why you can't get victory over here. Even though it don't look like they call it, they go together, they all come together so you can have victory over here. That's why you're still struggling. It bothered me because I was like, Lord, how can you, how can we be saved and filled with the power of God, the Holy Ghost of God, and we still struggle with struggles? And he said, because people really don't want to change. It sounds good and it looks good to come up to the altar and pray and say, Lord, deliver, deliver, deliver. But when God say, okay, I'm ready to deliver, you have to change this. Well, I don't want to do that. But I thought you said you wanted victory. Ah, it sounded good. 